Between 2016 and 2023, the National Association of Resident Doctors, uh, NARD, reportedly downed their tools for about 128 days. Although the industrial action, according to them, was to press home their demands. Analysts are worried by this growing trend that seems to be a pattern. Recall in May, resident doctors embarked on a nationwide warning strike that lasted for five days, where consequently the association, after its uh, three-hour extraordinary National Executive Council meeting, said it would review federal government's commitment to resolving the issues in the next two weeks. Also in July, NARD issued a two-week ultimatum to the government for the implementation of all its demands. Fast forward to today and Nigerians woke up to yet another declaration of an indefinite strike by the National Association of Resident Doctors due to what they say is federal government's failure to meet its demands. Some of which include 2023 Medical Residency Training Fund, immediate release of the circular and one-for-one -one replacement, payment of skipping arrears, an upward review of our consolidated medical salary structure to the tune of 200% of the gross salary of doctors. Others, a massive recruitment of clinical staff in hospitals, immediate infrastructural development in hospitals, and an allocation of at least 15% of budgetary provisions to health. Two days ago, obviously worried by what this call uh, could mean to Nigerians, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, pleaded with the resident doctors to shelve their plan for a nationwide strike. But obviously, all pleas fell on deaf ears. Subsequently, the Speaker also met with President Bola Tinubu Tuesday over the industrial action, pleading with the President to wade into the matter and address the issues raised by the resident doctors. Observers are worried by what they describe as a looming health crisis. But the question on the lips of many is, why now? Resident doctor strike is our focus on Nigeria today. Welcome to the program. I am your carrier, Clinton. Joining me via Zoom to discuss the topic resident doctor strike is Dr. Emeka Innocent, National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD President. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you very much for having me. With me in the studio is uh, Ahmed Abubakar Tenimu, an activist and also a human rights lawyer. Good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. It's always me. a pleasure having you, you know that. Always a delight having you. <laughs> Now, I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Emeka. Uh, it's been a, a chain of demands from the National Association of Resident Doctors over the years, though it, it might seem justifiable. Is that the right time? Well, um, I listened to your introduction. Uh, I want to put it on record that this association, the Association of Resident Doctors, we are usually hesitant declaring nationwide strike because we know the kind of work we do. We know what happens when we go on, on strike. But incidentally, it's unfortunate that the media and the Nigerian public only hears about us, about the news we have only when uh, that industrial is. And you have to understand that before we ever get to any need, we would have been walking around the club going for medicines to ministry, you know, advocating for resolution of whatever challenges we encounter. And it's only when our members see that there have not been any commitment, or maybe there is no speed on the part of government in resolving the main issue, that they will have no option but to give us the direct impact on strike. Now, if we analyze the demands that we are making, one after the other, with an open mind, trying to understand what the issues are. I can assure you that Nigerians will, uh, will agree with us that what we are, we are doing, we are handicapped and we don't have any option. Everybody in this country that, that, that has been following events in the health sector, we know that we have massive brain drain. 
our doctors and nurses are leaving this country in groups. And it has led to a situation whereby our hospitals are massively depleted. We don't have doctors and nurses again. Nigerians go to the hospital, they, they spend hours there without seeing their doctors because you have a situation whereby one doctor is doing the work of many. We have doctors in this country, even though we are overburdened by work, on top of that situation, they are being owed their salary. We can mention the names of the hospitals, and we are not talking about one month, six months, four months. How exactly are these people supposed to survive? And we have been on this for, for so long, and it doesn't appear as if, uh, you know, at least this, this is the failures that members are getting, the speed with which uh, the agencies of government are addressing this is too slow. Our members are dying. We lost a member last week. It has become a weekly event that we get news of our members dying because of the work overload happening. And so part of our demand is that government should quickly replace doctors and nurses that have left the hospitals to meet up with the demands of work so that our members will stop breaking down. They will stop dying. And incidentally, government has actually agreed since February that they will do this. But up to this moment, they have not released the secular. And so the chief medical directors cannot, you know, leverage on the or, or, on this one-for-one uh, -one policy that we've been talking about to replace those who have who are left the system to maintain services. Departments in the hospitals are shutting down because we don't have people there to, to man them. And so when, when people say they have pleaded there with us and it fell on deaf ears, I begin to wonder whether they actually understand the demands we are making. This is a, it's an emergency. You talk about 2023 medical residency training fund for 20, you know, for this year. Captured in the budget. Our members have gone for those trainings in question. They are, they borrowed to go for them. You know, and they are not able to pay. And this is something that that that, that government is supposed to do. It is an act of the parliament that has been signed into law that every year this has to happen. We have been on this one since January this year. We have been talking about improvement in our salary scale. Okay, uh, Dr. Mekka, I, I understand your concerns. We are using that approved, uh, what approved in 2014. And since then, you have had inflation, you know, increase in exchange rate, increase in the poor price. And so our members are saying, can you increase this to, to take us back to the, our purchasing power, the value of the salary after 2015. Okay. okay, because these are the things leading to brain drain. Doctors are living in their numbers. And we have found out that the most important cause, the most germane cause of this brain drain is for remuneration. And okay. so if uh, government wants to add, they have to Dr. address Dr. Mecca, this. Dr. Mecca, I will, call, I will come in here uh, before this. you uh, before you continue. I understand your concerns. You've ruled out a lot of issues that you know that's been uh, uh we kind of um sort of worry to uh resident doctors but then again considering uh, that this uh, administration is young and ministers uh, are yet to be appointed uh, don't you think it is uh, uh, a little bit uh, too much for them or it's uh, kind of too early so you know in, in all the demands we've made the most urgent demands of all of them, the, the police on one-to-one -one replacement. You don't need a minister to release that secular. The memorandum of understanding we signed with the government two months ago, it is written clearly there. People have access to it, they can go and read it. It was written clearly and signed that that secular will be released on or before 5th of June. We don't need the secular to because you see, this is very important, I repeat, because this is what we give the CM this opportunity to quickly replace the unless they are saying that they don't agree with us that doctors have left our hospitals. And that will be strange. What we are talking about is uh, is an emergency. Nigerians are already dying. You bring you know, you have influx of patients to the casualty the, the department where you are supposed to have a, a certain number of doctors to be able to take care of the wounded. You have only one doctor there. How is he going going to cope? So can they quickly release a secular so that this CMDs can quickly replace those who are left to maintain services? The payment of 2023 medical residency training fund is captured in the budget already. It can be released even without a minister. Okay, so it, is it what happens or what is supposed to happen is that when we make this demand, 
and government method and addresses, you know, and try to a, a address the urgent ones amongst them. I'm sure our, our members will understand and now give more time for the other demands that we made to be addressed. And I also want to point out that this is not just about the federal government. Some states government have completely abandoned the healthcare system in their in their states. And the brain day we are talking about is both internal and external. You have doctors moving from states hospitals to federal. You have some of them moving from, uh, from there to outside the... Do the Dr. Mecca, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll get back to you in the course of the, uh, of the program. Now, uh, uh, Tanimu, you've had uh, quite a lot of things uh, he said there. But um, again, isn't it worrisome that Nigerian uh, Association of Resident Doctors, even though uh, still embarked on indefinite strike, even though the Speaker of the House, you know, uh, uh, earlier pleaded, you know, uh, for them to give them the House leadership, like give them two weeks to, you know, find uh, a solution to the issues. Um, I, at this point, I want to start by completely identifying with the um, uh, Nigerian Social Resident Doctors and Educators. Um, the action they've taken is the language that the government um, really uh, work to and understand. Well, but, but again, I'll ask you the same question. Is it not too early? Because it's, it's they are yet to, the, if you to recall settle. That, um, <laughs> if you ask me. The government is yet to settle, but the first um, one of the major policy drive of the government is to remove subsidy. Subsidies are affecting every sector of the economy. People are finding it extremely difficult. If you could have um, state governments and other organs of government asking their staff to work from home, asking people to skip some days off, even though some have been doing it before now, the medical doctors are human beings. The health workers are human beings. They go to the regular markets that me and you go to. The purchasing power, it affects them. The workload, you have a group of people that are overburdened. If you've been to, you know, if you look at what is happening, a lot of people have stopped going to hospitals. They only go to hospitals when the, uh, the, the self-medication has failed. Every average Nigerian, even those in Abuja and, and city centers, mm -hmm. once they are sick, the first thing they do is to go to Google at times. They seek for the symptoms and they go mm -hmm. and get self-medication, which is not good. What we are even talking, the focus is on those major um, situation whereby a medical doctor needs to attend to you. Issues of emergencies, accidents, issues of um, operations. And if you go to our hospitals, you'll be shocked at the number of people that, are, uh, that a particular uh, medical officer is supposed to attend to. Then you now want to say if um, the consideration of the government that is too early, mm -hmm. then it should have been too early to remove the means of livelihood. And mind you, the reason why they are not taking the pleas the, from the government very seriously is because over time, the government have not lived. No, you mentioned up means to, of livelihood. How did they do that? They didn't their do that. Salaries, their salaries is affected by the inflationary trend. Inflation has been consistently rise, increasing for, uh, since the last administration. All true. We are talking about more than 22% inflation. Your salary, no matter the amount you are taking, mm -hmm. when you go to the market, you are paying. What you are paying for, you are getting half the value. Mike, you I said the But they didn't take workers. away, they didn't take the take the, the means of livelihood away. Probably you it, it it's affected, not it's affected then. negatively and the impact is so tremendous that the <laughs> volume of the quantum of work, mm -hmm. one of the major um, demand is the one for one replacement. Mm -hmm. You don't expect as I'm telling you, I can tell you for free, a lot of states you don't you have their workers not coming to work, even in the uh, the federal level, some people devise other means because look at the city centers, today it's dry, you see people, cars are low as scanty because people cannot afford it. Then you now have a medical doctor that has a car that needs to be in the city center as well to attend to his patient. He's paying fuel, he's purchasing, he's buying fuel at the uh, no subsidy uh, price and his salary has not been increased and you expect him to work in some cases 24 hours is is already impacting negatively already the health sector is in a state of comatose then with all these challenges that all these challenges that all of us as uh, citizens are been able, uh, has been able to there is a, a special 
there's a need for a special intervention. If the government can be... Is it really uh, comatose? Yeah. It is. No. You've been to hospitals recently. A lot of people are like, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, why do we have <laughs> instances of <laughs> um, <laughs> medical tourism? Our leaders, if they are Tell sick. Me, tell me, well, I'll stop you here. So we'll take a break and uh, let's listen to the. It's in Nigeria today. We're talking about the resident doctor strike. Uh, we'll uh, pause here to listen to the comments of Nigerians on the issue. Don't go away. The health doctor that you are seeing, and they will tell you that they are on strike. They are on strike. But it's not good for Nigeria. It's not good for us as a citizen as well. You know, this is the only hospital that will say that, okay, we can rely on for now. Because by now, no doctor at all. Okay. At this hour, no doctor. Okay. So it was early morning that doctors uh, show up, okay. few of them. And it's very unfortunate because it's not easy. You are battling for life, and the person to help you is living. It's not easy. So we are praying that government should do something. I would appreciate it if government can actually, you know, um, help them so that they too can also partake in whatsoever thing that the other people are going to get. Because we all know that it's not going to be easy for all of us to leave these poor people. You know, how many private hospitals are available? How many people can afford, you know, these hospitals? They are demanding for payment of residents, um, their uh, training fees. They are also asking that the government should do something on uh, having uh, doctors to um, employment of more doctors because uh, they believe that a lot of them have TAPA, which is the TAPA syndrome is still there. Um, they believe they are overstretched. And the government should consider to fasting employment of doctors. You know, go through the long process. Um, that's what they're asking for. And they're also asking for uh, skipping allowance, all the allowances that have been holding for longer, other things like that. Welcome back. It is still Nigeria today, and we're discussing the resident doctor strike. And my guests are uh, still here with me. I uh, have um, uh, one Vazum, one gentleman Vazum, and one here in the studio. Now, I'll still on you, uh, uh, Tanimo. I know uh, you've said quite a lot about what should have been done about the fear, removal of fear subsidy. You know, uh, recently, uh, President Bala Ahmed Tinubu you know, as, uh, talked about reviving the health sector. And of course, the removal of subsidy is affecting all, all, or, you know, every sector, not just, you know, just the resident doctors, you know. Uh, but then, don't you think it's a step-by-step -step thing? You see, if you look at the way Amana, the subsidy was removed mm -hmm. from the world, um, from the get go, the first time he had his inaugural speech. So, if there's any increment and promises for review, equally should equally be commensurate as we are removing the subsidy, mm -hmm. um, the, the palliatives and the increment should equally follow naturally. Already, people are feeling the negative impact, and we are talking about protection of life. If you have people that have been overburdened, people that have been made promises to, and those promises are not kept, then things that are affecting their livelihood are being implemented. Then one wonders the sincerity and commitment of the government. Every sector is affected, but the health sector should be looked into. People cannot afford the private clinics and hospitals. So the government, in fact, at the, way, at the, 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 at the moment, as I told you earlier, a lot of people you go to government hospitals, you really know what I'm talking about. We are in the city center, we are not having it uh, easy. Then you go to the rural areas. People are dying in droves. It's just that maybe people don't have a means of reporting and seeing in actual sense what is really happening. No, we are seeing what is happening, but the present administration has promised that it will revive the health sector, of course. Uh, uh, just like we said, the, you want the action, ministers not are here. Promises. Yeah, action, the, the, the timely action. action. I don't want to talk about <laughs> that, Tenemo, but um, I think it's a step-by-step -step, uh, thing. Now, uh, Dr. Emeka, uh, as much as I would uh, want to say, okay, I understand your concerns, but again, are you not worried about um, uh, your patients and what is industrial action and how it will affect them? 
So it's uh, also because we are worried about our patient. We are the ones on ground seeing this patient. We are the ones that know that we are losing patients a lot these days because of this inadequate manpower. That is why we have been crying out this last year for government to quickly recruit doctors. Because you see, once you don't have enough number, you know, that is expected, it's going to be leading to death, you know, increase in mobility and mortality. And that's why we've been crying about this. If you don't have enough hands to take care of patients, they will be dying for me. So do we continue to allow our patients that because of this inability of government to quickly recruit doctors to replace those that have left? Secondly, I told you that our members are dying. We have statistics. So some of them are breaking down across the country because of this work overload. And so are they, you know, is government going to continue to sit by and watch these things happen? See, um, our members are simply saying that these things should be addressed so that they will be able to, to you know, to have enough motivation, to have enough, you know, full complement of the of the medical team that is required for them to take care of their patients. And incidentally, I repeat, if you analyze the demands we are making, so you know, so many of the urgent ones are more they can quickly be addressed. So there is no need. As far as we are concerned, this track is actually needless. It's just that our members feel that we have been pushed to the wall. So we believe that these things can still be resolved in a matter of days. The ball is on the court of the government. You know, I'm sure that they can address this thing. They can address the demands we, we've made. Like I, I said before, when a, an association makes such <coughs> demands, the, the government should identify the quick wins among them. The, the, the ones that are very important and urgent that can quickly be addressed. And when they do that, of course, our members are patriotic. I'm sure they will understand with government and then give more time for the other long-term problems to be addressed. But when they refuse to do that, our members will feel that, look, instead of continuing to work in this condition and be losing our lives, that they will rather withdraw services and try to you know to escalate and raise alarm and uh, you know appeal to government and even uh, Nigeria to help us to be on government to address this issue that we have identified. Like I said again, some of our members have been owed salary, and so how can someone you are owing six months salary? In fact, in some states, and I'm talking about both federal and states, in some states they are owing 28 months of salary to doctors. So and you say they will call, they will continue to come to work to do what exactly how would they fuel their cars how, how how would they eat how would they take care of their domestic needs these problems are very, very you know I, I think that government should address for us to come back to work Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Emeka. Now, Tanimu, what kind of um, uh, measures are we expected to see in the coming days, you know, you know, before the release of the, uh, as we await the ministerial uh, list? Um, I think the, this issue can be addressed. The minister is, uh, the president is a father figure. Mm. He has always demonstrated uh, capacity in terms of addressing pressing needs. Mm -hmm. There's no um, need for him to immediately reach out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I learned the Secretary of the Federal Government, um, Senator George Akube, has made an attempt. But because over time they've made such kind of attempt and not really came out of it, so that. Um, they, but this, uh, this is a new government. Um, so the approach should be different. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they should be reaching out and there should be some concrete steps. Mm -hmm. you could, the, the demands are many. You start with one and move to the other. There is that demonstration. You cannot, you, cannot, um, you don't expect the doctors to understand with the government preaching austerity measures where on their own part we've seen um, certain um, funds being approved to the members of the National Assembly to ease uh, their hardship. We don't keep wondering what type of hardship when we have um, workers that their salaries no longer can afford the basic necessity of life. When you have doctors that tend to protect our lives, they are all being all salaries, they have not been salary increment and the working condition you go to hospitals, you discover the ACs are not working, the funny, the equipment, some of them are dilapidated, and the general um, working condition is not encouraging. What we expect is that we are expected to make sacrifice. The government wants us to make a huge sacrifice. The sacrifice will be all round. The government should lead from example. They should demonstrate that they are cutting 
wastages, income leakages, then people will um, tend to understand. But if the government uh, approving huge amount of funds to national assembly members, but, but they, to they've, they've promised to do to uh, take care of all this. You have mentioned in the, the you know. Uh, the loopholes and the, the rest yeah, of them. The timing, the timing is what is important. Well, well, what is <laughs> it? Uh, well, I'm totally with the medical uh, uh, workers. Uh, we still believe that um, in, uh, well, in, in this, no, distant time, yeah, no distant time, no distant time, all yeah. some of these issues will be but addressed. But now that the, the strike has already been uh, called, is now the best time for the president, uh, at least, to demonstrate that capacity by reaching out to them and directing the permanent secretaries to take immediate action. Thank you very much. Uh, I am that's it on Nigeria today. But I must thank you, Dr. Emeka Innocent, President of the National Association of Resident uh, Doctors, uh, for your uh, time and contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And also, we appreciate you immensely, Ahmed Wakatanimu, for activists and human rights uh, lawyer. Thank you so much for your time and thank contribution. Thank you for having me. Always a delight to have you. And to our viewer, thank you for always being part of this. I'm Ikaria Clinton. Good night.